Hey Flosstube friends! My name is Lynn and this is my channel Those Missing Stitches where I talk about two of my favorite hobbies, cross stitching and reading. Today is Friday, March 1st and welcome to my channel. Uh, today is my floss tube number 15. I'm one month away from my one year floss anniversary, if that's really a word. So I'm really excited. I can't believe it's already been a year. Uh, so thank you everybody for joining me, especially to my subscribers. And if you're new here, I definitely would appreciate if you like what you see, you would hit the subscribe button. Um, I am going to go over a few things today, all of my progress in February. I have some new starts. I do have a finish. I do have some whips to go through. I have some plans for March, including some new stitch alongs. I, I do have a giveaway winner at the end of the last video as a thank you for reaching 2000 subscribers. I did a giveaway for um, a piece of fabric from those missing stitches, my Etsy shop. So I will announce the winner after I go through my whips. And then I do have, um, at the very, very end, I've added a segment where I talk about books that I read during the prior month. If you're, if that's not your jam, you know, you can feel free to sign off at that point. I'll give you an opportunity to, but I'd love it if you join me. Got a lot of positive feedback after the last time, uh, the last video that I did was the first time that I did it. And a lot of people liked it and I like to watch other people too. So I'm glad that people are enjoying it and you stayed and watched and joined me for that. So let's kick off. This is um, everything that I've worked on in February. It was not as productive as January. We did have a bit of a pet emergency in our older doggy. That's a rescue doggy. We've had her for 12 years. We think she had a stroke a couple weeks ago. So there's been a lot of caring for her and um, kind of rehabilitation for her. And thankfully she's definitely got some like permanent side effects, but she's doing well. She's actually um, able to go to the bathroom by herself and we're really happy to have her back home when we weren't really sure that was gonna be a possibility a couple weeks ago. So super thankful um, that things are looking up, but it did kind of definitely dig into any sort of free time that I had. So, uh, but for February, I did work on 12 projects total. I had two new starts. I did have one little mini baby finish. And then I did meet my whip go goals. And then I have some certain monthly goals that I set up for myself. I'm gonna say I met those kind of. And I'll explain that when I get into showing you my whips. Um, but let's get to it. So first I wanna go through my new starts. This is, let me get to my stats. So the first new start I have is one that I started for um, Valentine's Day for February. It's called Love You Most by The Camping Stitcher. And I used it, uh, I stitched it on 25 count a silver and Moon Lugana, one over one full cross with a called for DMC. And I finished it within a couple of days. Here's my little baby. My baby start and finish. So cute, so fun to work on. I love working on 25 count, one over one full cross. This is just a little tiny thing. I'm gonna put it in a frame and it'll go up on a shelf in our living room when the season calls for it. So, so happy with that one. Turned out so cute and didn't take very long to do. My second new start is one that I started yesterday. Apparently there's a thing for, um, they call it a leap day sal. So I've been wanting to do a long dog for sampler for a really long time. And there was a lot of talk on the long dog Facebook group about making it a long dog leap year sal. So the idea is start a long dog sampler on leap day with the intent of finishing it by the next leap day, so in four years. And I've been, I went back and forth because there's several long dogs that I actually want to start, but I'm really, I was always like migrating and gravitating back towards Saga. So I did purchase Saga back when it was first released. And of course, you know, I have to pick the biggest one ever made because uh, I go big or go home. And that's the one that I chose to start. So I did start it yesterday and I started it on, I'm trying something new with this one. Um, I'm trying a 20 count Lugana. It's not something I have available in my shop yet, but I have ordered some because I do like working on it. So I think I am gonna add it to my shop too soon. Probably 20 count Lugana and 20 count Ada. Um, so I did start this on 20 count um, Sensitive Sylvie, which is a color that's in my shop. And this is my progress. I started it yesterday. I did get quite a lot done yesterday. 
and I did a total of 1,242 stitches. I went back and forth about, I was so indecisive about what colors I wanted to do, and I did some test stitching, and I kept coming back to, um, I really wanted to use silks, but I couldn't quite find a lighter blue that I like. So I kept coming back to DMC 930 and 931. So here are the colors I'm going to be using. You can see mostly 930 on the arches, and then I'm going to be adding 931 and a little bit of 930 on the inside just for some uh, contrast. You can see a little bit of the 931 in here and up some of these <laughs> up some of these dots here. You can see I'm already losing my place and what I want to do some color changes on. This is just like one blob on the pattern because the pattern's only one color. And I just was stitching along and I did it all in 930 and then I realized, wait, I want to do the inside of the arches in 931. Do I want to frog it? And I thought, maybe, no, it'll be fine. I just do what I'm going to do. And then I'm like, no, it's going to bother me. I'm going to frog it. So you can see a little bit of the fuzz, but that'll be covered up by the 931 when I get to that point. I don't think I'm going to finish this by next leap year. I think I calculated it to be like, I'd have to do like 2,600 stitches a month for the next four years on this to be able to finish it by next leap year. I'm not really setting that goal for myself. I'm going to try to work on it. We'll see if I can achieve something like that, but I'm also not holding myself accountable. Maybe it's leap year and four leap years. <laughs> maybe I get it done in 16 years, or maybe I get it done in eight years. We'll see. I'll get it done eventually, but I'm not going to try to overburden myself by finishing it by the next next leap year. But it is fun to participate in the style, and there's so many people that have jumped on board, not just with Long Dog, but with other things, and it's really fun to see like patterns and colors and fabrics that people are picking. So really, really cool. Okay, so I'm going to go through uh, my other monthly goals in my whip rotation. Um, the first two, I'm going to talk about whip go and the two um, calls for whip go this month. The first one was the perfect love I never had. This is um, the artwork is by Adrian Borda and is charted by unconventional cross stitch. I am stitching this three over one time stitch on 25 count easy guide to Ghana. Here's where I was the last time I showed this. This was also um, a stitch or like a challenge that was happening in February uh, with Kaylee 10 stitch and a couple other people on Instagram to stitch. They called it UXS 29. So stitch every day in February on an unconventional cross stitch piece. And I have two, but I mostly focused on this one and I did work on it every day for 23 days, and then I lost it after the dog got sick. So um, 23 days in a row, I did work on it and got 8,415 stitches on it. And now I am at a total of 17.31%. So quite a lot of progress. And she is looking so beautiful. There is a whole lot of confetti and color changes in this hat. I'm so thankful I'm almost done with that. But then I realized like the rest of the hat's much bigger on the other side. So I have a ways to go before I get this done. But crazy to know that I worked on this for 23 days and got like an additional 15% done. So it's amazing what just a little progress can do every day. Okay. So that was a whip goal goal. My goals in WIPCO are when I'm doing full cross, I want to do a thousand stitches. And when I'm doing tent, 2,000. So at 8,000 stitches, I well surpass that. The next WIPCO goal or the next WIPCO call was Tonight We Ride by Autumn Lane Stitchery. Um, this one I am stitching on uh, 18 count Ada called Genuine Jillian that is from my shop. It's not currently available in my shop, but it will be making a rotation back around. And the goal on this one, so I actually have a monthly goal and I had a WIPCO goal. So my monthly goal for this one, because I want to finish it by September, was to get 1,200 stitches in it a month. The WIPCO goal was 1,000 stitches a month. And I was talking in my last video, do I use this consecutively or concurrently? Do I call 1,200 meeting goal, both goals? Or do I try to reach for 2,200? Well, I ended up meeting 2,200. I got 2,341 stitches. And... Here is where I'm at. Oh my goodness. Let me see. I'm going to hold the whole thing. The fabric is a lot bigger than I actually need, but 
I haven't quite cut it yet. So I did a whole bunch of the house and down into the graveyard. And that is not, it's a lot brighter orange. But that is more representative probably of what the color is. So that is tonight we ride. I'm excited to have this one done for Halloween and start another autumn lane. I love all the autumn lane Halloween stuff. So, but I don't want to start another one until I finish this one. This one's super easy to work on because it's a lot of the same color. So it's kind of mindless and easy to not get lost in some of the stitching, even though I did screw up the house and had to frog it a little bit. It's doing pretty good now. I think I have a good system now. So I'm on track for that one. If not, I had time because I did almost double the goal, the monthly goal on that one. So I'm totally okay if I get that done ahead of time. The next monthly goal, or yeah, the next monthly goal is actually um, the Grand Library. And this one is why I said I sort of met my goals. So my goal on the, uh, the Grand Library is 3,650 stitches per month in order to get an additional, in order to get to 55% complete on the whole pattern this year. I did not meet that for this month's goal. However, I had extra last month. So between the two months, I'm still on target for where I wanted to be by the end of February. So uh, this is the Grand Library. It's the regular size max color version of the chart. It is artwork by Amy Stewart and chartered by Heaven and Earth Designs. I am stitching this on 18 count Easy Guide Ada. Here's where I was the last time I showed this. And I don't typically take this out of the Q-snap unless I'm actually switching sections or showing a section I haven't shown before because it is pretty cumbersome to get it in and out of the Q-snap. So I'm just showing it to you in the full frame. So what I am working on is the bottom left-hand corner in the mystery section. And here is what I've gotten done. You can see the little guy, the little spy under the light down in the corner, kind of bending over. So it's starting to take shape. I did a total of 2,804 stitches for 0.7%. And in total on this whole pattern, I'm at 185,857 stitches for 46.15%. So creeping up on that 55 that I want to get for this year. This one's the one that I'm not sure I'm going to meet those monthly goals because it, especially as I get down to, like, I think I have about just a little over 4,000 stitches to complete this two-page section, but all of the colors are 100 stitches or less in all of the colors that are left. So they're way more spread out. There's way more color changes than changing in the needle. It takes a lot longer to complete any sort of stitching than if I'm doing like big sections of, you know, 500 or more of a color that can go a lot faster. So I'm debating. I might end up changing sections for something that's a little easier to get faster stitching done, but then that leaves like the slower stitching all to the end and I'm not excited about that. So we'll see. Still working on it. I think that's the main thing that's important at this point, rather than giving myself a very specific number goal to reach. But I've reached it so far, and I'm just going to give myself some grace if I don't for the rest of the year. Okay, moving on. My last one for my monthly goals is Away We Ride, and this is by Blackbird Designs. My goal is to do about 650 stitches a month. It's a paper pattern, so I'm not entirely sure how many stitches are in the full pattern. So I'm kind of taking a guess how much it's going to take me to get to the end. Here's where I was in the last time I showed this in my video. I'm stitching this on 18 count Admirable Atticus that is a, also a fabric that's in my shop, and I'm stitching it to a little one full cross in the called for floss. In February, I did a total of 695 stitches, so I met that goal. And here's where I'm at now. Doing a whole bunch of that house. And trying, hoping to finish that house so I can get back into some of the more, uh, the outline and some of the more color changes. I'm really close. I think I'll finish that. I'll probably be able to finish that with the 650 goal for this month. So on track for that one as well. Hope to have that one done by September so I can have it up for uh, fall and the Halloween season. Okay, so that's the last of my monthly goals. Everything else is actually just stuff I picked up because I was wanting to work on it. So the next one is 
Boreal Forest. This is uh, from the shop Stitch is So Beautiful on Etsy. Here's where I was the last time I showed it. Uh, I'm stitching this one on 25 count Easy Guide Lugana 3 over 110 stitch. And I put in an additional 478 stitches. Here's where I am now. You know what's interesting on this one? You can't really see it. I ran out of, so I use a full skein of 939 up to a certain point, like up to here, I think. And then I had to switch skeins and I could tell there's a color difference. I can't tell in this light, but I could under my nice light. So I'm, it's not bothering me, but it's one of those things that like, oh yes, I can tell a little bit why you want to order like cloth all together. And I do have it all together. I just don't know if I purchased it at different times and now it's too late. I'm not going to go back and frog anything or start anything over. I think if it's, I mean, you can't tell if it's far away, but I can tell when it's close up. So I'm just going to have to let it go. Okay. All right. Next is, and I think I've been saying the name of this pattern wrong. I actually think it's called floral sampler. I've been calling it Flower Speed the Soul because that's the closest it's on there, but I think it's called Floral Sampler. And this is um, by, the artwork is by Happy Mood Point, but I think they go by Daily Patterns Post on Etsy. Uh, I am stitching this one on 25 count Humorous Hyacinth, which is a color that's in my shop as well. And I'm doing this one one over one full cross in Silks for You PR158. Um, here's where I was the last time I showed this. And then in February, I stitched an additional 687 stitches. And now I'm at 3,903 stitches for 9.77%. This is uh, Humorous Hyacinth. It's like a super, super pale violet purple. So it looks really good with this purple Silks for You thread against it. That's probably more what the color is. <clears throat> Okay, next is um, Fruits of Plenty by Modern Folk Embroidery. I am stitching this one on 25 count silvery moon Lugana, one over one full cross. Here's where I was the last time I showed this. Made quite a bit of progress on this one. I stitched an additional 2,518 stitches for 5.31%. In total, I'm at 16,363 stitches for 34.52 and here's where it's at love this one love the colors love stitching on it and seeing the motifs come together super happy with this one and it's a good slip call for March so I'll talk about that later Okay, next is another Modern Folk Embroidery. This is the 2024 Stitch Along called No Time Like the Present. Um, I am stitching this one on 18 count Silvery Moon Ada. I needed something, a little bit of change up. I love stitching on 25 count one over one. I'm just having, I need to switch it up sometimes just for my focus, just to let my eyes rest a little bit. So I started this one on 18 count and I am uh, did, let's see, in February, I did an additional 816 stitches. At, in total, I'm at 5,813 stitches for 16.33%. I am using two colors of Roxy Flosco. Called, one's called Yonder and one is called Titanium. There they are actually. So blue and like a silver gray. And I love how the colors are coming out. I did make a color change in this flower in the middle. The pattern calls for it to be the alternate color. And I switched it to be gray just because I want gray all the way across the top. And I may make some other color changes as I go. We'll see how that goes. Okay. And last but not least is Winter Solstice. This is a Joan Elliott Designs. I am stitching this on 25 count sensitive Sylvie Lugana which is the, from my shop as well. And this is the same when I started Saga on, it's just in 25 count. And I'm stitching it one over one full cross with Silks for UPR 070, which is their black. And here's where I was in the last video when I showed this. 
And in February, I only worked on it two days, but I think I got most of the wing done in those two days. I did an additional 388 stitches. Um, and this is paper pattern, so I can mark off stitches since I've scanned it into Pattern Keeper, but I don't know the total percentage. And here is what I got done. So poor little owl. Hoping to finish his other wing this month, just so he doesn't look so lopsided. Okay, so that is Winter Solstice. Okay, so next I want to talk about my plans for March. Uh, as I mentioned, the WIPCO calls are up for March. They were number one and number 10, which are Groups of Plenty by Modern Folk Embroidery. So I intend to get an additional thousand stitches on that one. And the second call for number 10 was uh, on my chart, The Night We Broke the Moon. Artwork is by Adrian Forda and it's chartered by Unconventional Cross Stitch. And since I'm doing this one 10 stitch, I intend to, my goal is to get 2000 stitches on that one. Um, I do have a mini haul kind of, I purchased one pattern from Market and this is, uh, I'm, I'll put a picture up. This is the one pattern I purchased is 324 by Works by ABC. I purchased it from Abby at Top Knot Stitcher. She is actually planning on starting a stitch along on 324. Uh, this And it's called 324 because it uses 324 DMC colors. There is a version that uses, I think, 36 colors on it, but I intend to use 324. I think I have most of the DMC. There may be a few that I don't, and I can just find those or maybe borrow some DMC. It's only like... I think she said the little squares were only like 25 stitches, so there's not a ton of actual stitching of each color. I shouldn't need a full skein. So we'll see what I have in my stash. I think I have mostly everything, if not kitted up, in a kit somewhere that I can borrow from. So I'm looking forward to starting that one. Really looking forward to like the color changes and having some options for some different colors. She had said, Abby had said, you know, it's 324 squares. So if I if she does one a day, you'll have it done in less than a year, which seems reasonable, especially since the small squares are only 25 stitches. And I'm like, that's achievable. I doubt I'll work on it every day, but maybe if I can make a goal for myself of just doing seven a week, I'll have it done in less than a year as well. So that may be added to my monthly goals. We'll see once I start that, if that's something I want to add and if I have the time for it. Um my goals are starting to get a little lofty, so we'll see about that. Okay, so that is it for my whips and for my plans. Um, now I want to talk about the giveaway winner. I want to thank everybody who commented on my last video. Again, thank all my subscribers for helping me get to 2,000. I had a lot of great comments on the last video. Enjoyed reading everybody. I did read everybody, so I'm not necessarily able to reply back to everybody, but I at least hopefully give you a heart to let you know that I've read it. Uh, enjoyed some of the the fun drinks I had asked what's your favorite winter beverage and I realized you know if for my southern hemisphere folks that are watching me it is not winter time and you're probably not thinking of warm beverages but thank you for chiming in and saying what you normally drink during winter uh, so I will let you know that the winner of the giveaway is which sips ps and it's which w h i c h and I think she's purchased from my shop before because um, she said she needs more. So if you can just email me at thosemissingstitches at gmail.com, I'm happy to send you a piece of fabric from my shop in any fabric count and any color that's in my shop that you would like. Just email me and let me know who you are and what you would like. And if you have ordered from me before, I should have your address, so just let me know. Um, and that is it for my stitchy updates. Uh, now I'm going to talk about books. So if that is not something you're interested in sticking around here for, thank you for joining me. I hope you join me next month. That'll be my one year anniversary. I'm sure I'll do a giveaway for that. I'll have four new colors in my shop at that point. So I will be showing them off at that point. And I'm very excited about these colors that are coming up. I'm don't know if I can wait to start some of my new starts on them that I have planned for them. We'll see if they pop up in my new starts for March. Um, thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you next time. And if you are sticking around for the book talk, let's talk books. So I finished six books in February, a lot less than I did in January, but of course February was busier. Um, let me go through that. Okay, 
So the first one that I want to talk about is or, All That We Are Together. It's by Alice Cowan. This is book two, and I had listened to book one as an audiobook called All That We Never Were. And it was good. I like the depth of the characters. The book one is about um, a, a young lady who's 19. She was in a car accident with her parents when I believe she was 17. And her both her parents died. And she was injured really badly and she was in the hospital for a year. And missed her senior year of high school and at 18 is intending to go back to high school and finish her senior year. But her family, that her brother that's left that's taking care of her can't stay in the area. So she decides to stay with a family friend. Something and and romance ensues essentially. So it kind of irked me a little bit because it's an adult male with a girl that's still in high school, even though she's an adult. That part of the plot line kind of bothered me. But I still read book two. So it didn't bother me that much. I have to look I guess I had to look past it. Book two it's a few years later, so she's definitely an adult at this point. Um, they've had some differences. She's finishing college now. Um, she wants, you know, part of part of the healing process of both the books is that she wants to be, she was always an artist and having this trauma happen to her kind of took her away from that art. So really helping her heal and helping her get back to her passion in creating art. And it was good for, like the second book I think was good for going through some of that healing. It was just very, very long, a lot of buildup, a lot of buildup and a lot of character development. And I felt like at the very end, the end was just kind of rushed. Like it happened, there's all this buildup for 95% of the book. And then the actual like final scene of coming over the climax was like literally two pages. So it just seems kind of anticlimactic at that point. Like, wait, there really isn't a lot of discovery there. So kind of disappointed in the ending but I think the books were pretty good you know it doesn't sound like that's what I'm saying well we'll see <laughs> really good characters I'll put it that way okay the next book that I read was the heaven and earth grocery store by James McBride um, this is about a neighborhood in Pennsylvania and I can't remember exactly when I want to say like 1930s maybe um, it's a neighborhood that was predominantly Jewish immigrants, and there's more African Americans, and, and there were African Americans living side by side, and there's more African Americans taking over and Jewish immigrants moving out, but one particular family of Jewish immigrants stays and is really revered by both communities and both cultures. There's a whole lot of characters and a whole lot of character introductions, and it took a really long time to get to the meat of the story which I did really like once they got to that point. There's a young African-American, I think he's maybe 12, maybe 10 or 12, a boy who uh, lost his hearing in an accident. And, you know, this is a time when doctors and society really didn't know what to do with the hearing impaired. And they wanted to put him in a special school, which was in essentially a sanatorium. And the community comes together to try to rally behind hiding him so they don't have to put him in the sanatorium. So some things ensue and some tragedies happen and the community really comes together to help this kid and then help the one Jewish family that had stayed in the area that was really revered by all. So that part of the story I liked, I just felt like it took a really long time to get there and then it really wasn't quite as satisfying, I think, as... I had hoped it would be, and there was potential to be. It was just kind of stagnant, I guess, is, is and it's, it wasn't in a bad way. I still enjoyed reading it. I just wouldn't say it's one of those top ones where I go, yeah, that was a great one. You have to read it. So that's just my opinion. Really, really good writing, really, really good characters. I just felt like the plot line could use a little bit more, oomph, if that makes sense. Okay, so next. Uh, the next one I read is The Third Mrs. Galway, and this is by Deirdre Sinnott. I don't know if I'm saying that right. 
I think in February I must have had a lot of recommendations for like maybe Black History Month because they seem to be on a theme of a lot of um, Black history. So this one is no exception. This was uh, from the point of view of, or not from the point of view, but it was the story of some escaped slaves from the South. Uh, in this was before the Civil War, so I think it was like the 1830s. They escape from the South, a woman uh, that's very, very, very pregnant and her 12-year-old son, and they make it all the way to Utica, New York, and they hide in the shed of a very young white lady who has just been married and doesn't really know what to do when she discovers them. She doesn't know if she has a responsibility to turn them in. She doesn't know if she should feel sorry for them, especially with the lady that is very pregnant. Um, and ultimately, they can't she wants, she asks them to move on and tells them, I won't tell anybody if you move on by tomorrow, but the woman is so pregnant, she can't. She's about to go into labor and can't go anywhere. So there's definitely some backstories and some current stories and some characters that develop with each other and it becomes kind of, you know, will, will they be caught? Will they be turned in? Will they be discovered by other people? Um, how are they all connected? Why did they end up in this particular shed? This one I actually finished in two days. So it was a really good read. It was very um, fast paced and very active and I thought it was a really good book. So I appreciated that one. Um, it was a, it was intense, like very fast paced, which I appreciated. And that, that's why I think I read it so fast. So that one was a good one. Um, the next one is Before I Met You by Lisa Jewell. This is not to me, it wasn't like your typical mystery of Lisa Jewell. Hers often have to do with like kidnappings and deaths and like more murder mystery kind of things. And this one was a mystery, but it was more of a mystery involved in a, a, grand, a woman dies and her step granddaughter inherits a portion of her estate. And there's someone else that inherits a portion of the estate as well that she's trying to find. So in uh, trying to find this person, she's discovering more history of her grandmother that no one knew. And, um, you know, again, along the theme of what I've been reading for the month, some black history in there of in the 1920s, London being around the jazz scene and um, some cultural differences there and some things that ensue from there and some charities that she ends up supporting. So, not to give too much away, just very, really good and really sweet to hear some of the background, like to have the different correlating stories of the 1920s with the step grandmother and then the current day with the granddaughter trying to find all this out and discovering this at the same time as you're hearing the story from the grandmother's perspective. Um, but not like super mystery like Lisa Jewell typically is. So definitely liked it uh, and still really like Lisa Jewell's writing. So we'll continue with her as an author. The next one I read was Did You Hear About Kitty Carr by Crystal Smith Paul. This is about a biracial woman in the South who's raised, I think it's like in the 1930s, 1940s, with a single Black mother. And she is very, very fair skinned when she's born. And she's often um, used for the advantage of her mother to pass as white to get service in shops and to give her kind of a better life. So the mom kind of acts as a nanny to her as a white child and let to, in order for her to be able to go see movies, to sit in restaurants, to um, be able to go shopping and do just everyday normal things that most of us take for granted. And ultimately um, the mom has this plan since the day that her daughter is born that she wants her to be able to have a better life and live this life forever. So she sends her to California to visit a friend and intends for her to live in California as a different person and to pass for white forever. So she does and that she ends up becoming Kitty Carr and ends up becoming famous and a celebrity in the 1950s and has to hide herself essentially for the rest of her life. So this is the story, again, similar to the Lisa Jewell book, different generations, she's passed away. There's the family, the, the three young girls who have um, inherited her estate, and there's a lot of question about why did these girls inherit her estate. So they're discovering her story as you're being told her story um, in alternate
chapters as it was happening. So really cool lineup of the stories. And uh, I really did enjoy this one and enjoyed the backstory of the different women and the growth of the women and even uh, the different characters and how they um, deal with different racial strifes during different generations was really cool to listen to as well. Okay, and the last one uh, is Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Moss. This is book five in the Throne of Glass series. And this is actually my favorite of the series so far. There was some a little more focus on some of the secondary characters and building up of the team around the main character's story. There's a lot more action, so a lot more self or um, a lot more fast paced. And I felt like it was a lot of build up. And I, I really felt like when I when it ended, I'm like, that was very Empire Strikes Back, like that middle movie, middle book, where the ending is leaving you saying like that can't be it and i know there's two more books so i know it's not it but that's exactly the feeling that they probably wanted to leave you with that like i gotta have more that can't be the end of the story so that definitely achieved that i was not entirely sold on this throne of glass series especially compared to like a quarter throne of roses and really enjoying that series i wasn't enjoying this series as much but book five kind of turned that around for me sticking with it I do, I did enjoy book five. So I think it's worth, like, it does seem to be building up. And I think someone had commented on my last one that this was her first series that she ever wrote. So you can kind of see her developing as an author. Uh, the writing is definitely getting better. The characterization is getting better. The story, the plot line, everything seems like it's getting better. So I did enjoy this one and I would recommend it. So that is it for my reading for February. I don't know what I'm going to achieve in March. I actually just finished another book yesterday, but I'll talk about that in my, or today. I'll talk about that in my next video. Um, thank you everybody for joining me. I'm so glad if you stuck around and enjoyed this book talk that you're joining me for the whole video and that you're, you're liking the book talk. Feel free to comment um, if there's anything else you would like me to talk about, if there's any suggestions on what I can talk about with the books. I don't want to give too much away, but if there's anything more you'd like to hear about, just let me know. I'm, I'm interested in, I'm continuing to do this and interested in what it is that you'd like to hear about. So thank you everybody. And I hope you have a great month.